welcome to Rodeo Today. As I brought out in our last segment there, in our intro to what we're going to do, once again, I'll iterate that we are Rodeo Today. We're the Tell It All show and the world of rodeo and the world of cowboys. We're only going to talk about rodeo. We'll talk about current events, uh, hunting, fishing, golfing, everything. At this time, I'd like to bring on my good friend, Mr. Donald Graham uh, from Troop, Texas. Don's several times champion bull rider for the NFR. And so just a correction, Don was actually a three-time NFR finalist. Don, how long have we known each other? Well, we've known each other since we were little bitty kids and our daddies were competing and meet each other at Mesquite on the weekend. Seemed like that was our usual meeting place and uh, both our par- folks worked at rodeo every weekend, Friday and Saturday night. And I think I think your background goes a little further than than just your folks, because wasn't your your grandpa? Was... My granddad rode calves over there some too. Yeah, sure. He uh, Arthur Newton. He was foreman of the Josie Ranch in Carrollton for fifty years up there. And, and uh, that's an interesting story in itself, because uh, my dad they had a big what was it a Fourth of July calf? Fourth of roping? July full blown rodeo was one of the biggest rodeos. Oh, it was in a America. full rodeo. It, was it wasn't full, just a... yeah. They had uh, multiple perfs in one day, but. Uh, out at the Josie Ranch in Carrollton, and yeah. Let me ask you a question. This is something my dad told me, that your grandpa was kind of the horse trainer for the Josie Ranch. That's there was right. two elderly gentlemen out there that wrote, what was their names? There was Clint Josie and then Don Josie, Okay. Who I was basically named after. I oh, believe. really? Yeah. Okay. But, and uh, he said your dad, or your granddad, excuse me, Arthur trained them horses that them gentlemen, when they roped off of, they just stepped off and then the horse drug the calf to them. Well, just about. Just about. <laughs> these, these gentlemen were, these were very wealthy men in the oil business, and that was their hobby. They didn't play golf. They didn't have any other kind of hobbies. They just liked to come out and rope calves every single day of the week, Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday, they had a big giant team roping on Saturday. Really? And, of course, I was <laughs> lucky to see and meet so many of the professional cowboys of that day and time would drop by to, to rope with the Josies. But uh, with the 4th of July, didn't they give away a car? Or oh, they, yeah. They, they, gave they, away, they gave away stuff. They that, gave away They went big away prizes then. And then when was that, in the 40s, 50s? Uh, in the late 40s, early 50s, primarily the early 50s. Uh, I know there is a story that Clark McIntyre has... That's how he made it big. Is he won all around that uh, that year and won or most money and won the car. And once and, again, for you fans out there, that Clark McIntyre, he also has a famous daughter named Reba. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, exactly. he was a great roper. Oh yeah, but his wife Jackie related that story to me a few years back at the Oklahoma City Cowboy Hall of Fame inductions. Okay. Well, what we're going to do here today, um, we're going to kick this show off by. The season just ended uh, for these Cowboys, and one of the things I'd like to talk about that just a little bit, it ev- it ended a little funny. I guess I just being uneducated, the season finale to me meant the season finale, but apparently the season finale didn't mean the season finale because the week they had another week of a bunch of little bitty rodeos. Right. These guys are running all over the country, and we're going to talk about that Still later. Trying to make the NFR. Still trying to make the NFR. The actual cutoff date is October first. I mean, you know, it, the rodeo had to start before October first for the actual cutoff date. I found out, but I liked it better a little bit back in mine in your days when we all went to the Cow Palace and it, that it was, was over. The end of the rodeo, the rodeo season. season. Right I mean, there. it ended. It I've ended. been on that airplane coming back oh, home yeah. from uh, San Francisco. Cisco with a bunch of them in the cocktails cheering and some of them in the back with the newspaper <laughs> over their head crying. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, yeah. I, and the way I understood Salinas, that it's a, a, was not the season finale, but a tour rodeo finale. Uh, that was and my, that was, and I don't really have a good grasp of of how that all works. And that's but, funny uh, you asked me a question right before we come on the, the air. Uh the, if you go to the Pro Rodeo website, you, you says, well, we got world standings and tour standings. To answer your question, that tour standings was what points you had to get to to get to go to Salinas. To get to go to Salinas, okay. And that's where so that's, they, that's a, and, and they... And they had some rules in there that I think they're going to rethink. They had rules that you had to go to 35 rodeos and you had to do this. So it ended up they didn't get a full lineup of cowboys due to COVID and several, whatever the reason well, was. Well, certainly, and the pandemic has had a lot of effect on 
the rodeo season itself. You sure. Know? Uh, so I think that everything's kind of been a moving target with a lot of moving parts this year in the rodeo business. I think we're very, very, very fortunate that a lot of committees came together and, and really went beyond the uh, – uh, everything and, and put some rodeos on that ordinarily wouldn't have happened. And the rodeos that I went to and watched on the Cowboy Channel and some stuff like that, and you, you're on the rodeo committee at Gladewater, they had the best rodeos they've had in years. I don't know if it's because people took a year off and it come back fresh to them or, or what the reason was. They're tired of being in the house. I think and going largely out. that's it. Tired of being in the house, tired of the lockdowns. You know, there's so much mandated stuff to stay home and, and uh, maybe not mandated, but was highly recommended to stay home to kind of keep your health. And I think people were really... Uh, hot to get out and see some entertainment. I'm gonna and that's, that's what we really attribute our great crowds to at the Gladewater Rodeo this past year. And I'm gonna say this in pride. I think there's a lot of people like myself that has turned off a lot of sports because I'm sick of demonstrations, I'm sick of politics. I tune in to watch a football game, a rodeo, whatever, just to watch the rodeo. Oh, I didn't yeah. get in there sure. to, to determine who I was gonna vote for or what I was gonna do or who yeah. I was protesting, stuff like that. And I'm so proud of Cowboys. I don't know, I've never even heard of somebody even thinking about kneeling for the national well, anthem no, at a rodeo. No, not in the rodeo business. And and that's one of the, the great things about the rodeo business that it's just not been politicized like uh, other national sports. And I think that the fresh part of it is what brought fans to us. Some of the fans that, you know, maybe they just might like have stayed us. home and watched a baseball yeah. game. Hell, let's go to the rodeo. Fed up with that and, and want to get out and see something I where they're not, uh, I think so. not bothered by that. All right, well, first of all, one other thing I want to bring up, we have a great sponsor because this pony don't buck for free, and it's Frontier Rodeo Coffee. This is a morning show. Uh, we get up every morning, and we have our Frontier Rodeo Coffee brought to you by Frontier Rodeo and our friend Jerry Nelson. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, he's something, isn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And it was, that's a good deal. It, we, he's the one that got us behind it. He's launching this coffee. And by the way, it's quite good, and you're going to be able to get it on our website That's when, when we get it up and going and, and buy that and a couple other spices and barbecue sauces. And I know an old boy one time that made some Bloody Mary mix or something. Days of yore. Days of yore. <laughs> Days of yore. Okay, well, let's take a break right now, and then we're going to get back, and we're going to go over this uh, end of the year and and go event by event and uh, get into the NFR. Thank you.